Hello, this is Meet the World and today I will give you some insights about South Korea, specifically about Seoul, a complete and unique travel guide including general information, landmarks and some recommendations. So let's begin. Seoul is the capital city of the Republic of Korea or South Korea. It is located in the northwest of the country just 48 kilometers from Incheon Airport and 15 kilometers from Gimpo Airport. Seoul has around 9.5 million people by 2021. It is located in time zone plus nine and it is possible to experience the four seasons here. Seoul is divided in districts called Gu in Korean and I aim to introduce the main attractions of each one so you have a general overview of what you can find in each of them. Without wasting more time, let's start with Yongnogu, which possibly is the most popular district. It has been the center of the city since the Joseon dynasty, and now it is the heart and face of Korea. The district can be divided in three zones. Let's start with zone A. In this zone, we can find the Chongwa De or Blue House that used to be the president's house. Also here is the famous Bukjong Hanok village with its unique view. Next, with an amazing architecture, we have the National Folk Museum. Just next to it, we have the main palace, Yongbokgung, that is a must when visiting Seoul. Next is the National Palace Museum, where you can learn more about the palaces located in Seoul. Then we have Wagamun Square, that is another most visit spot in Seoul. Now, if you are looking for souvenirs, galleries, food or tea houses, then Insadong is the place to go. But if you are more into nature or into a romantic walk, then Cheonggyecheon Stream is a good option. Finally, in this zone, check out Bosinac, a huge bell in the middle of Seoul used in special occasions. This is the list of the places I just mentioned, and here it is a summary of this zone. Moving on, the zone B is next. The first place to show in this area is Chandokgung Palace, followed by the Changjongung Palace. In the middle between these two palaces, you can find or visit the secret garden that is really beautiful. Next spot is the famous temple in Korea that is called Goyesa, and close to it, there is a small and not well-known palace called Unhyeonggung. Next is Tapgol Park, that is a park with a lot of history. And finally, in this zone, we have the UNESCO World Heritage Gyeongmyo Shrine. This is the list of the places above mentioned. And here you can check the places with their location. Finally, Zone C, the third zone in this district. Seoul used to be protected by a city wall, and one of the best places to appreciate it is in the Naxan Mountain, in addition to nice views of the city. If you are into culture, then Marioner Park is a good place to go. Next place is Wangyang Market that is really famous among tourists. And close to the market, we have the Hyungjin Jimun Gate, one of the several gates found in Seoul. Once more, here is the list. And of course, the map and the location of the places. The second district to be shown is Junggu, that is literally the central district and historical city center. A 
This is another well-known touristic area with office buildings, department stores, shopping malls, markets and museums all converging in perfect harmony. Also, this district will be divided in three areas. Starting in Zone 8, we have Seoul Plaza that includes the Metropolitan Government Building, the Central Library and the Plaza itself. From the plaza just crossing the street, you can find the last of the five palaces in Seoul, that is Dok Sukum. And very close from the palace, if you are into art, you can find the Seoul Museum of Art, which features contemporary art exhibitions. Moving on, this district also has another gate that is called Sungnyeomun Gate. And next to the gate, we have Nandemun Market, with vast offer of clothes, goods and food. And last but not least, we have the Namsan Park, with one of the best views of the Nansam Tower. Once more, here is the list of the places, and of course the map and the location of these places. So, let's move to Zone B. This zone features the famous Myeongdong area with lots of cosmetic stores, delicious street food, and also fashion stores. But also, you don't have to miss the Myeongdong Cathedral with its pure Gothic style. Next is the Namsan Cable Car. And finally, the Namsan Gol Hanuk Village, that is an interactive an interactive Hanuk village with different activities and programs. Here is the list of the places above mentioned and here it is the location and the summary of the places. Last, let's go to zone C. In this zone we find the DDP or the Dongdaemun Design Plaza that it is a plaza, a museum, an exhibition center, and it's really famous to its stunning architecture and lights at night. The next district is Mapo, and it is one of the cultural centers in Seoul, where a youth and energetic vibe is reflected in the unique and diverse nightlife that it offers. On the other hand, uh, there are large green areas and paths along the Han River, which make it perfect for outdoor activities. I divide this district also into areas. So zone A, we can find a really underrated park that is Hanul Park or Sky Park. And the World Cup Stadium used in the 2002 World Cup. It's also located in this area. This is the list. And here is the summary of these two places. Next is zone B. This zone features two main areas that are famous for entertainment and party. So these are Sinchon and Hongde. It's a completely youth vibe in here. Next district is Yongsangu, or the Dragon Mountain. This is the most multicultural district due to the presence of a big international community. Also, it features nightlife and amazing views from the top of the mountain. Of course, the first place to visit here is the Namsam Tower. Also in this district, we find the War Memorial of Korea that is a huge museum to dig in the memories of the Korean War. I really recommend it. Next is Itaewon, that is the hub of the international community in Seoul. Also party, bars and international restaurants can be found here. Now, if you want to learn more about Korea, then the National Museum is the place to go. It is huge. On the other hand, 
if you are curious about Hangul or Korean language, then you should visit the National Hangul Museum. Next is Yongsan Park, that is a really peaceful park. And if you are into art, then don't miss the Lium Art Museum. One more time, here is the list of the places I just mentioned. And here is the map with the location of the places. So the next district is Sodemun or the Great West Gate. It is named after one of the eight gates of All Soul that is called Donuimun, which unfortunately does not exist anymore. However, this district offers cultural spots, museums, historic buildings, and monuments, as well as important and famous private education institutes, which are located here. Let's start with Sodemun Prison History Hall, that is a complex that keeps the memories and stories of Koreans in prison during the Japanese occupation. And just next to the prison, you can find the Independence Park that stands as a symbol of freedom for Korean people. If you are into K-dramas, you can't miss Ewa Woman's University Campus and Yonsei University, which both have been featured really constant in as locations of the dramas. Once more, here is the list and the map with the location of the places, and stay tuned because all the maps will be shown at the end. The last district that I will mention from the north part of Seoul is Umpyonggu which possibly is the greenest in Seoul, and still it is a peaceful place with not many tourists around. You can find temples, nature, mountain trails, and a modern Hanok village among its attractions. The Umpyong Hanok village is another Hanok village in Seoul that is not that known compared to Bukong, Bukchong Hanok village. Not far from the village, you can find Jingwansa Temple, that is another well-known temple in Seoul. And finally, the cherry of the cake, Bukansan National Park, with its mountain paths and unique beauty. Definitely you cannot skip it. Here comes the list of the places and the map with the location. Moving on to the south of the Han River, we found Songpagu, once capital of the Baekje Kingdom and center of the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. Nowadays, it stands as a sustainable and environmentally eco-friendly urban development with unique and breathtaking attractions. Let's start with the sixth tallest building in the world that is the Lotte World Tower, and you cannot miss the Soul Sky experience at the top. Really recommend it. And if you want some adrenaline boost, then Lotte World Amusement Park is the place for it. On the other hand, if you want something more relaxing, then Suction Lake it's the place. It is a nice lake in the middle of the city with beautiful views and cherry blossoms all along its perimeter during spring. Finally, the Olympic Park, which honors the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. It is also a really huge park. Of course, the list and the map with the place label. Next is Gangnam-gu, one of Seoul's business center, which has gained a reputation of being one of the most affluent, dynamic, and influential areas in the country. High living standards, wealth, luxury, and entertainment are the identity of this district. Let's start with Gangnam Station, that is really good for shopping, partying, and entertainment. 
Also here you can find the famous Starfield library inside the Coex Mall, which is a famous Instagrammable spot. Not far from the Coex, we find the Bongun Sa Temple, and its Buddha statue is impressive. Also, you can find the Gangnam Style Hands, honoring the famous song by Sai. And finally, the trendy and fashionable areas in the district. Up Pung Gyeong Dong and Cheongdam Dong, as well as Garusu Hill. You can check all the places in the map. Finally, the last area I want to show is Yuido. Uh, which is an island standing in the Han River and that is part of Yongdung Pogu district. Juido is home of tall skycrapers and it is the main finance and investment banking area of Seoul, as well as the center of the politics in South Korea. So as an island, uh, outdoor activities in the Hangan Juido Park are a must and these activities include uh, riding a bicycle, picnics, or badminton, among many others. Another view that you cannot miss is the National Assembly and Juido skyline. It's really worth it, especially during sunset or nighttime. Also in the area, you can find one of the newest and huge malls in Seoul, that is the Hyundai Seoul Mall. This is the list of the places above mentioned, and here dates the map of these points. Finally, other landmarks from other districts are the Seoul Forest in Songdonggu, the Sevitsam Islet and the Bampo Bridge, both should not be missed at night, in Sochogu. Then the National Cemetery in Dokjaku, and just for you to know, the Gimpo Airport with mainly domestic departures for uh, in Gansoku. So here is a compilation of all the maps that I show you before, and it is mostly for you to know that Seoul is a walkable city, especially in the center. Uh, nonetheless, you can reach any other part by subway. Transportation in Seoul is really, really good, so either subway or bus are really useful. And here is the map for the south part of the Han River, also reachable by subway. Overall, as a huge city, Seoul offers everything you can imagine, from technology and trendy fashion and styles to a rich and beautiful culture, including history and traditions. So food, architecture and unique experiences are also part of the identity of Seoul. Finally, and regardless about all the places that I've mentioned before, as personal recommendations, I think it's a must to do the next things in Seoul. First, walk or use the subway. Be careful of the weather. Seoul has the four seasons. Also, you must try the street food. It's really good and it's very, very like variable. You should experience nightlife. Also, you should consider hiking, at least one mountain. Of course, go shopping. And also, you have to make, to have a picnic or practice some outdoor activities in the Han River. And of course, you must visit a cafe or a tea house. I think those are things that should not be missed in your travel to Seoul. Well, that was all for me, so I hope this information is useful for you, and don't forget to like and subscribe, so see you around, bye!